Yeah, hello, scrappers. Peanut butter come out to supervise. Yeah, I brought this snapper in a month or so ago. If I remember right, I think this might be the seat for it, or it's a Murray seat that I brought up. I don't remember. That one might fit on. Well, no. I don't think it said it doesn't have the metal bracket, so I'll have to find out where I put that. I know I got it around here. So will it run? That is the question. A little 38 inch cut. I already put the battery in. And a lot of you guys already know that, uh, but just for some of those that don't know, whenever you're connecting a, a battery that's got juice in it, I always connect the positive first because if you do the negative first then your your whole body's grounded and if you slip with the wrench and it hits the metal you may see sparks so I always connect the red one the hot one first the red and then once it's good and tight then I'll do the black because if, the, if you're tightening the black and you hit it's not going to do anything so no problem there and then if you pull a battery out and you know it's got juice then disconnect the black first and hook that ground that way it's not the body's not grounded when you go to do the hot so just a tip for those guys that for you guys that don't haven't done this before now when I try to start it this is the one for the seat now you can bypass this you can tape the button down but as long as that brake pedals down you should be good because you don't usually don't have to sit on the seat if the parking brakes on so let's take a look up under the hood one thing I always like to look at right off is the oil and oil looks like it's a little over full Engine's not, motor's not locked up. Yeah, we'll put that over into that. And, yeah, filter doesn't look too awful bad. I've seen them where there used to be stuff caked on that. Yeah, gas tank's a little bit dirty. A little bit of crud down in there. A lot of times, a lot of these mowers, what I do, I got the small gas tank come off a push mower or something, and I'll just uh, unhook the fuel line there by the, where the filter is, and then uh, mount the gas tank around a self-tapping screw like up here to hold it in place and put a little gas in there and uh, see what happens yeah let's see if it'll crank over with that battery in there nope I got nothing so we either have a safety switch that's not engaged or we got our solenoid back here let me uh, run in and grab a screwdriver, a pair of flyers or something, see if I can jump across that solenoid. Yeah, grab a wrench and a screwdriver. Turn the key in the back into the on position. The way that was kind of sitting up under that cover, I don't know if I can get in there with the screwdriver without hitting that metal. So I'll try it with a wrench. There's some sparks.
cranking off the solenoid. So I could also have a bad ignition switch. Now what I can do, I know that's jumping good off the solenoid. Of course, solenoid could be bad. I could do figure, try to figure out which is which one of these wires to use, and I can run a run a push button start. See if I can find a water waterproof push button start and mount it say right up in here. So you turn the key on, use the key itself as a as your ground, your shut off. Which I can run a wire and probably get the plug on it, and I could just you know, try one, try and plug one of those and try it. And if that doesn't work, try the other one. But we're cranking good. So let's put some gas in it. Uh, let me put this on the. tripod that should be plenty shouldn't take a lot just to test this Now we'll go ahead and try it. Yeah, let me spray a little starting fluid on it. Cranking good. I see I got a gas leak on the carburetor. Shut off. It helps you turn the key on, doesn't it? I'll try choking it. And it was running, it wasn't leaking, but now look at it leak. And it looks like, by looking at this wire right here, it's supposed to have one of those uh, fuel shutoffs. And apparently they broke it off, so I'll have to go see if I got one on another mower out there. That I can bring up here and put on that one. And that'll fix that problem. And get a seat on it, and then I'll take it get the fuel leak stopped and put a seat on it and see if I can drive it around a little bit. It's starting on its own by jumping it. So, like I say, I either got a solenoid problem, which I can jump across the solenoid, or I got an ignition problem. The ignition is shutting it down, so that's, that's good to know. So, I can try to run a wire back there to the solenoid to see if I can, you know, set up a push button start. 
Yeah, let's see if I can find something to put under that to catch that. Well, scrappers, I went out in the field and looked around and uh, didn't find anything that looked right. <coughs> I didn't see anything that had that, that single flat wire that that one has got. Let's see if I can zoom in on that thing. That just takes a single flat. I'll try to zoom back out some and see if I can show that to you. I don't know if this is going to be on screen or not. I don't have a monitor hooked up, but that's just got a single flat. Most everything I had, and this one was hanging loose, and it's pretty kind of messed up, rusted out. It was, you know, sediment bowl was off the carburetor, and that was just hanging there. But you can see it's got two prongs under there. It had two wires going to it. Just about all these 14, 17 horse Briggs, they all had two wires. That's just kind of odd with this one, it just has one. Whereas, apparently, apparently this one here has this whole outer casing gone. Because that part there looks pretty much, pretty much the same, same size there. So, what I could do, I could grind this down, which I probably don't have to. It looks pretty bad anyway. Either that, or I was thinking, because this one you can see through. I could get some JB Weld, pack some JB Weld up in there. And that would seal that off because it really shouldn't be any pressure and that would stop it from leaking and it may work but I may just go ahead and take this to the wire wheel clean it up and grind that nub down and then put it on there and see see if it'll run and see if it'll stop leaking so I'll be back in here in a couple of minutes I was just getting ready to head in there and I thought well I think I'll show you guys a sediment bowl that looks pretty bad, so I'm going to see if I can gently get that gasket off of there and get in there with some emery cloth and kind of clean that up a little bit and uh, make it look a little better. One thing I wanted to kind of point out on this thing, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but uh, you see if this is tied up against the sediment bowl which cleaned it up a little bit, still wool, got all, you know, all the loose stuff out of there. But if this stuff, thing is up there tight, like that, you can't get a regular wrench in there to tighten that. So I have a few of these around, I'm not sure where I picked them up, but they're about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And see, that'll, that'll, that's, that's got wiggle room. So that gets in there pretty easy. Lots of wiggle room. So one thing this one here's got a gasket on it, so I'm gonna pull the gasket off. Put it on this one. This may not be the right one, but normally this end comes to a point, like a needle valve where it pops up and shuts the fuel off. So gasket doesn't look like it's in the best of shape but it should work I might go put a dab of grease on that real quick okay I put a little dab of grease around there I think the grease will kind of help hold it in place but it doesn't fall off of there like I said it doesn't look really good like right there it looked like it was hanging down a little bit so now I might get over here and get on my knees so I can see up under there a little better make sure I get this centered without having to slop it around a lot and knock that sediment bowl out here I got some rust right here on the bottom of the aluminum
Yep, hopefully you're still looking at what I'm trying to do here. I'm not sure exactly how that's fitting. It doesn't really feel right, but... Pretty easy to mess these gaskets up. I may have to lay on my back where I can look up in there to see the threaded part. <clears throat> Get this thing lined up right. Yeah, I think we got her there. So you see with that needle ground down, it's not going to shut the fuel off. But hopefully that'll stop it from leaking. Back up here. Put the battery on, charger on there and put it on 2 amp charge. That should be way more than enough. I'm not seeing no leak. battery kit charger and then I'll get in there and try to jump her over. And this time turn the key on. So when it starts cranking it should start. Scared me jump like to get at because that hot wire is kind of right in the way. Liking it too much, is it? That could be a problem here with it, too. There could be starter problems. It's not going to, it doesn't look like it's turning. Yeah, starter's turning, but Sounds like it. We get a hammer and tap on it. Give her a couple taps now. It kind of sounds like that Bendix isn't kicking in. Starter spinning, but.
Well, she runs. And I got the gas leak. Well, maybe not. I'm seeing something dripping back in there, so it's probably the gasket now. It's not, not running out like a sieve like it was before. See it dripping back in there. So, may need a gasket. And then I'll have to find a seat and try to drive it around and see if it actually see if it mows or not. If it doesn't, well, I know I got a good motor. I got plenty of starters out there in the field, so I'll just have to find one. Which I got a few more, I think 12 and 14, 15 horsepowers out there, so they pretty much should take all the same starter. Yeah, I'm still dripping a little bit of gas. I'll get a pair of pliers here and pull that gas line off and run it back into the can. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, found out the motor does run. Got some kind of ignition problem as far as it cranking when you turn the key over. But like I say, I believe I can run a hot wire from the battery up to a push button switch and then back down to the solenoid. And it may just be the solenoid. I might be able to switch swap solenoids and it may run just fine. So I'll have to pull the battery out of there and give me some room to get in there. And, and uh, I think I got a couple solenoids laying around here. So I'll pull that sediment bowl back off and check that gasket. And we'll go from there. But it sounded pretty good. So I'll get the cover back over the air cleaner and uh, we'll get some pliers where I can disconnect that fuel line and run it into the gas tank, gas can. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video and like, subscribe, share it. Uh, and don't forget about my Amazon, uh, Amazon affiliate page, you know, for I got several tools listed on there. Uh, what I might do, I might, I need to probably get on there and see if I can find a thin half inch that'll fit that. I'm sure Briggs has a special tool for it, but they probably want fifteen, twenty dollars for it. Or you probably get it for a five, you know, on Amazon. Just, just something thin that's you know thinner than a normal wrench. Normal wrench is good, what quarter inch or so thick. So if it was eighth inch thick, it'd work fine. That, one I used the 16th and it had you know, more than enough enough play you could go twice that thick and get still get in there so I keep that one over I'm like one of the magnets there by my workshop in the workshop there's where I know where it's at and I got another one that will work too in my toolbox so I was checking I checked that out a little bit ago that Kind of cute little mower, the ideal for a, a woman with a small yard, being a 38 inch cut. So I'll have to get that gas leak stopped and uh, either get that ignition going right or have a, get a push button. I can use a key for a shut off, just shut the key off, that'll, that'll kill it. We we'll see that, see that's working. I have in the past wired wired one up where I had a toggle switch for a kill switch and then I had a push button start but I don't think it was waterproof and one day I was gone and apparently that thing decided to engage kill switch was on so it couldn't start but that thing walked probably 20 feet and then it ran into something and you could see where the back tires were turning yeah like it just it hit and, and it was still running trying to push it trying to walk it because it was in gear and starter was engaging trying to make it go until finally the battery went dead or something I thought first thought when I saw it was moved I thought the grandkids have been playing with it but then I you know got looking at where it was set in and and everything I thought now apparently that push button shorted out because it wasn't waterproof I think it was just a 
start button and or horn button that it was meant for inside a vehicle. So I'm gonna have to see if O'Reilly's carries some that is uh, waterproof, or see if I can find something on Amazon. That would be the way to go. It's either that or make some kind of a bracket up under the hood somewhere where it would be protected from, from the rain and stuff. But I'm going to get off of here and wrap this up, and we'll see you guys in the next video. So uh, stay healthy. Keep getting that scrap. Uh, if you don't have a place to store it, I know you got to probably sell it and move it. Or if you need cash flow, sell it. If you got a place to store it and build some up and you can afford it, you know, then go ahead and set a little back, you know, let it build up, save it for when, it, when prices go up. But I know a lot of you guys have con contracts where you, you buy the metal from them or give them a percentage, so you have to keep selling. But uh, stuff you pick up that's not on the contract, if you, if you got a place to store it, you know, they go ahead and stockpile it until the prices get better. But, uh, I'm thinking about talking to an air conditioner place about buying their compressors because I know they just take them up and, and sell them as is and they take them up to the city so if I get if I can give them the same price as what they're what they're getting at the city maybe I can pick them up that would save them the gas and the time from having to drive up there because they're just a couple miles away from me maybe three or four and I can pick them up there bring them home cut them down of course that that copper there I would probably keep I would have to you know probably sell every week or month or whatever depends on how often I'm bringing them in and uh, stockpile everything else to keep that keep turning that over for cash flow and then uh, stockpile everything else so we'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye